Hi, I'm Dr. Chang again. Uh, this is another update from my center at Hanabusa IVF, uh, a, a partial success story. This is not our typical patient. This is a case of a patient with, the technical term is hypopituitarism, and it's not a case that I normally deal with, but, it, um, but she ended up in my lap and we had to do something. So this is a, a patient, Miss H, very, very young. She's in her early 20s. She's married. She's thinking about having a child, but the problem is she does not get regular periods on her own. And the reason she doesn't get regular periods is her pituitary function is very poor. Her pituit the pituitary gland is the gland that produces all the hormones that make your eggs grow, that allow you to have a period, that develop your period, that allow you to conceive. In her case, her pituitary wasn't functioning. And, and uh, this was a result of a procedure that she had when she was younger. She had received a bone marrow transplant when she was a, a young child to cure a, a, a disease. And it did cure the disease, but unfortunately it left her, her pituitary non-functioning. These patients are usually at university centers. They're being treated when they're young with hormones to make sure that they grow, that uh, they get regular periods, because if you don't, patients like this may never reach puberty and never progress. So in a situation like this, you know, it's usually pretty straightforward. If you're not making the hormones, just give the hormones, they will get their periods, they will make eggs. You do an egg retrieval. You don't even really have to do an egg retrieval. You could do inseminations, natural intercourse, but they should be able to get pregnant. Unfortunately for Miss H, that was not the case. You know, she was at a large university program. The, the university, you know, population over 50,000 students. You know, you, it's a big, it's not a small program. But uh, after a year of treatment with the university program and some private programs locally, egg never developed. She never got close to an egg retrieval. So th this is where, you know, I come into the story. So she and her husband contact me. I'm thinking to myself, why are you contacting me? I'm not feeling very optimistic because like I said, from my experiences before, this should be very, very straightforward. So uh, we start and her hormones are what you would expect for a woman like this. Very, very low, nothing is really happening. So I start a, a moderate to high stimulation. Uh, typical dosage, gonal F, if you're familiar with this, 300 units. It's higher than what I usually use, but I, I thought we need to use a high dose in a case like this. One thing that I do very differently, what we do very differently here is we're always checking the environment, we're checking the FSH, we're, as I said in the past, we're checking the, the water and fertilizer, the soil, to make sure that everything is ideal for egg development. In this particular situation, oddly enough, her FSH became very high. It was overstimulated from this amount of medication. So it dawned on me that the problem, this problem is more complicated because this is not just a case of a hypo underactive pituitary, this is also that a case of a diminished ovarian reserve. Even though the assumption was the eggs were there and just needed to be stimulated, there were not that many eggs in her reserve. So what we needed to do is cut back on the stimulation. I had to cut back so we can get the FSH to an ideal level, 10 to 25, somewhere in that ballpark to allow the, the eggs to grow. And lo and behold, the estrogen raised and began to develop and we eventually were able to do an egg retrieval. We just created a day three embryo that we froze for the future. And we're and right now we are continuing with this process to hopefully create more embryos. Uh, it's gonna be tedious, it involves lots of injections, but we wanna try to optimize the chance that th this couple has a child in the future. Uh, once again, this goes back to creating a perfect environment. And you'll hear me go back to this all the time again. Creating a perfect environment of FSH, not overstimulating, not understimulating, and the hope is that uh, the body will respond accordingly.